The next phase that is coming, maybe to America, could be cyber attacks. Putin is very unpleased with the amount of resistance that he is getting in Ukraine. And he knows that that is because NATO and the United States has supplied it. Ukraine with a lot of the military might that they are putting up against the forces from Russia. Thank you for watching Survival Preparedness for Beginners and today we're going to be discussing some of the things that you may want to think about getting before the cyber attacks start. I don't believe that a nuclear war is in our future at this point. But I also do believe that if he's going to do something, it will be cyber attacks against our financial institutions and our critical infrastructure, meaning going after the power grids and going after all the different types of technology that is out there, being either cell phone towers, satellites, whatever it could be. Any disruption, folks, could be devastating if you are not prepared. So this video today, I'm going to try to do as fast as possible and make it as short as possible. I've done videos on just about everything that you guys have, are going to be seeing in this video today, so you can go back and watch some of those videos. But this is just to give you a refresher course on what you may be wanting to try to buy in case of these cyber attacks. And we're going to start off right over here. Battery banks. Battery banks are a great tool to have. This way here, you're able to charge a lot of things. You can run lights, you can charge your phones, you can charge just about anything. You can run anything depending on the size of the battery bank that you do have. It's all on what you can afford. But when you buy your battery banks, you have to have some way to charge them. So you have to have solar panels. I've done complete videos on these. All right. You got to have good solar panels that you can put out in the sun and charge your battery banks. So you have a limited amount of power. You also want to make sure that you do have flashlights and batteries. Flashlights and batteries. If the power grid goes down, you need light to see what you are doing, whatever time of day it may be. Having any all different types of flashlights, from headlamps to regular flashlights to little lanterns that you can set up and everything else is another great tool to have in case these cyber attacks happens and this madman goes after our power grid because that would cripple us beyond belief. Having radios, battery powered radios, they could be any type of a radio. You could have radios that you can recharge, use your battery banks and stuff because you need to get information because they will be able to get information out through the radio waves. A lot of these major radio stations and everything else, they do have backup power. So, having some way to get information on what is going on around you is a critical, critical point to your planning, to your success in surviving that particular situation and to help you make decisions based on what is taking place. A short wave radio like this Bofang, all right? You can get information and everything else on here. Now, if you do not have a license to talk on this, you're not supposed to talk on this, all right? Unless it is an emergency, dire emergency situation, then you are allowed to talk if you get somebody on here. And it's a good thing to know your actual concordance where you are, where you live, and everything else, so you could give someone those exact concordance so that possibly help could come in a time of need. Now let's move on down the line and we're going to cover something else. The next phase of the coming cyber attacks 
you want to make sure that you have some way that you can cook in your home and you're not relying on electricity, natural gas, or any of those things. Because if they get shut down, what are you going to do? Ask yourself that one question. What will I do if I have no commodities coming into my house as far as electricity, your natural gas, or anything else? Are you going to be able to cook and survive? So having a backup plan, like a Roman stove that you can pick up, relatively cheap, little cylinders. Now you can also buy the adapter. I've done videos on these things, folks. I go into detail, but you can buy an adapter. You can hook up your 20 pound tank. I show you how to do it and everything. And you get a lot more cooking time. You can have something like a gas one that runs on butane. Having ways to cook and heat up water to you know, if you have to sterilize it or for just making coffee is a beautiful thing to have in case of these cyber attacks coming to town. A lot of this stuff you can pick up and be prepared. It's all in about what you can afford and what you need to do. It's got to be part of your plan. You have to have a backup cooking system plan. So this way here, you can survive if something happens that they do shut down the whole grid and everything else and you're ready for what may come next. The next phase of these coming cyber attacks, if they do happen, is having some way to either store food using a cooler and store water using water containers you can buy these just about anywhere, folks. So it's something that you really need to look into. While you're doing it, for 20 bucks, you can get a Sawyer Mini that filters out over 100,000 gallons of water. You have to have some way to make sure that you can filter your water in a grid down type situation. Storing water is the hardest part for a lot of people. But having containers like this, if things look like they're starting to go south and you're starting to hear things, it wouldn't hurt to fill these bad boys up. And this way here, you do have a good quality backup of water. There's a lot of different ways that you can store water. You can buy water bricks. You can buy these water containers right here. You can do it. Have any cooler where you can throw your frozen foods or something in. Or if you're going to make ice, if you have the next product I'm going to talk about in this video, it would be a crucial, crucial investment for your survival and your family's survival. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the final thing that you really need to think about purchasing and being prepared is a gas generator. Now in doing so, you gotta make sure that you have extra gas. You can buy the gas cans, go fill them up before the prices of gas go through the roof. Having a generator will allow you, if you buy one, depending on what you want it to do, you can buy them to run your whole house, you can buy them to run appliances, whatever. This one here will run appliances, fans, lights, and all that. This won't run the whole house. You have to get a higher you have to get a bigger generator in order for that to take place. So having a gas generator to fall back on is a very important key for you and your family's survival. You can keep running your refrigerators. If you have the gas stoves like I showed you, you can cook, you have the stuff in your refrigerators. And remember, you don't have to run this thing 24 seven to keep your refrigerator going if you can keep it closed. This way here, you only have to run it for a few hours at a time to extend your gas that you do have put up. It's a no-brainer, folks. While this thing is running, depending on what you're running off of it, charge your battery banks, charge your cell phone, charge whatever you can while this is running to maximize the amount of fuel that you are burning on a limited basis. Because let's face it, not everybody's going to have a thousand gallon tank in their backyard full of gasoline. So if you have 
four or five of these five gallon jugs full and you're running this on limited hours per day, not all day long, you're going to get quite a while out of this. And hopefully by then, maybe they can get the infrastructure part, the cyber attack. They can get it under control and start getting power back up and running. Now, if it's a total grid down EMP type situation, you're going to want to try to extend stuff as far as you can because Lord only knows how long it'll take them to replace all the lines and everything else is going to be destroyed by something of that magnitude. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. I hope this helps some people out to think about what you may need if Putin pulls the plug here and goes after a cyber attack on the United States because he's not happy about how this whole thing's playing out. And he's not happy because a lot of people in NATO and in America have pitched in and give Ukraine a lot of their weaponry and everything else that's causing him some conflict. He doesn't like the movement of this. He thought it would be all over by now and obviously he was wrong. My thoughts and prayers do go out to all the Ukraine people and I hope that they're all safe. What is taking place is a complete tragedy in this world by one person. So until next time, folks, do your part and be prepared. I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Catch you on the flip side. Mm -hmm.